Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is what, for the longest time, was my newest worm bin, but as of like two days ago or three days ago, it has been dethroned and it is no longer my newest worm bin. But it was kind of unusual to have a, a system that's already in its 90 some odd days of age, still registering as my newest system. And well, People who are regulars here on my channel already know why that occurred is because I did try to launch off a couple other systems which regrettably failed and the occupants of those systems all um, passed away and that brought this system back online as my newest worm bin but now I've got a couple um, well I've got one new bin newer bin than this but this system is, as of today, 100 days of age. So it was 92 days of age when we last checked in here, but I figured we'd come back only eight days later because 100 days of eight, 100 days in service, it's kind of a milestone day. So I figured we'd come back and we'd treat them to a, a quick little meal, a meal consisting of stuff which, very similar to last time, is not something from my freezer for the past I don't even know how many feedings now maybe half a dozen feedings or so now have all been consisting of foods that were not first frozen which is um, pretty inconsistent with what I usually do here almost everything that the worms get is typically first frozen with the exception of maybe some coffee just a couple chunks of moldy bread over here um, so coffee I naturally I don't freeze that worm chow I don't freeze that but pretty much everything else goes into the freezer before it gets placed into the worm bins and the non-frozen food that these guys got last time was something I figured we'd give them again because last time we were in here they got a stalk of Brussels sprouts however that stalk was extremely dry so ever since the last time we checked in here over a week ago I've been soaking this remaining piece of the Brussels sprout stalk to try to get it rehydrated and I've been kind of dipping one end in since the half of it sticks out in the air I've been turning it over every day or two to make sure it gets soaked from both ends it's kind of funny too because every time I come down into my worm readout nowadays it's like it's almost like this is sort of a um I don't know if you're familiar with the smell of these things but it's in the same cat in the same family as cauliflower and cabbage I always screw up the word, but I'm going to try to say it. Cruciferous? Is that the right word? That's the category in which cabbage and Brussels sprouts all belong. And they have a very distinct kind of stinky odor. <laughs> so it's almost like I've had this sort of cabbage-y smelling um, air freshener down here in my wormery for a number of days now. So due to the fact that things are not getting frozen before being put into the the bin the stuff just sits around I mean this cabbage I believe goes back a good number of feedings and it's still crunchy and crisp if I had first frozen this cabbage before putting it into the worm bin here it probably would have been eaten within a week's time already so we've um we've been giving these worms in this system only stuff that was not first frozen for many check-ins now and here's one piece of what they got last time and I can't remember did we give them two pieces or just one piece let's keep digging and see what we find yeah it was two pieces we broke it in half or well we tried to break it in half then I had to get my little pocket knife out to to hack the thing up I've got some of this stuff going in another of my bins somewhere and in, in that other location wow look at that the weird gooey stuff just came squeezing out the side of it <laughs> all right well I guess that means the breakdown process is occurring here and I wonder if this one's starting to get a little bit soft and gooey too I just caught a whiff of something pretty foul odor <laughs> it might be that so I'm not gonna play with it any further we're just gonna Try to get down into this bin so we can give them today's feeding and then get everything covered back up again. It smells terrible to me, but I'm sure the worms love it. 
this over here is part of this cabbage the this is the stem end of it and it keeps trying to sprout little growths here's another piece of it we keep breaking them off every check-in every little thing that tries to grow on this thing and I've got a feeling it's just going to continue to do that for quite a while before it finally gives up so usually it's weird because usually I open up the feeding zone in this direction across the bin and I've kind of gotten into the habit of putting two bins out here side by side so I'm so used to excavating in this direction I've just started excavating in totally the opposite um, manner as we normally do <laughs> in here so just sort of a um, force of habit I guess got me going from left to right but since we're only dealing with one bin here with this system I oriented it here on the table the way you see it here to take up as much as possible as much space as possible to fill the entire frame of the camera so whatever I figured since I started that way let's not try to correct what I did let's just go with it and perhaps today we'll have a slightly differently shaped uh, feeding zone and you know we've got that coffee that they're getting today too so that means we can give them a nice replacement feeding zone indicator meaning that the old one can come back in as supplementary bedding and good now I can sort of cover up that Brussels sprout stalk because it is starting to stink up a storm over here so perhaps it's time to get the feeding in here so we can get this thing covered up and I can be spared of needing to smell this stinky thing any further so it is kind of interesting to see certain stuff in here that's not been frozen especially when it starts to try to grow <laughs> continue to grow down in the worm bin what else we got some other stuff down here it's not been frozen oh, yeah it's because the feeding zone is usually going this way there's still a good bit of stuff under here that we've not yet unearthed so let's see what else there is down here and then we'll reposition it down in the feeding zone however the feeding zone is going to be oriented a little bit differently this time I'm sure I'm not going to remember that from from I mean when we get back in here the next time whatever that might be I don't think I'm going to remember <laughs> that we did it this way maybe I will but perhaps we should just not go very long maybe we'll just sort of create a little bundle of food down here in the middle um, so let's get our little air freshener out here you can see this really interesting little soupy mixture that's become of it and last time when I was trying to cut a longer piece of this stuff I don't know how long it was about this big I was trying to cut it but it didn't want to go so I'm just curious to see how it's going to give or not give now that it's been soaked definitely gave a lot easier now Alrighty, very fibrous material let's see if we can just hack this thing up into a few more chunks we'll drop it down into the feeding zone the stuff is resisting my efforts so I should really be careful it's times like this that you end up injured if you're not paying attention to what you're doing letting yourself get distracted by the resistance so that's interesting I could see the inside of this thing has got like that same weird jellyish kind of material that came oozing out of the other one so I've not um, had much opportunity to deal with the stems of Brussels sprouts in the past this is actually my first time so it's pretty interesting to see what's inside this stuff so I um, I guess now we've got a somewhat better explanation as to what that was when we gave it a squeeze and the stuff came oozing out this piece is definitely holding up really good Whew. and there's that smell <laughs> so let's get this food down in here so we popped in the new fresh pieces we're um, returning all of the old stuff here's a little chunk of gourd and then I've also got that fairly good sized portion of coffee to give them too I actually emptied another coffee filter into this one over here so it's practically overflowing <laughs> so let's just get it right down into there and 
Well, I mean, now what do we do? We do we use two feeding zone indicators? I guess we could if we wanted to. So then my uh, my clean hand is getting all soiled here. Let's drop in some of my worm chow, which I often like to include with the coffee. Sort of increase its appeal. And now I feel like we've given them a pretty generous uh, helping. So I think we'll use the new one as a feeding zone indicator, but perhaps we can even submerge the old one as supplementary bedding to go in with today's feeding, because now that I come to think of it, we didn't really supplement the bedding in here, which is sort of what we've been doing here in this system, because this system was started pretty much full. I pretty much filled this container right up to the rim with bedding when it was first launched. And just based on the um, absence of free space, I felt like I just really couldn't add any bedding to this system just because it was so close to being at capacity. But over 100 days, the worms have been gradually working stuff down, making all the material that had been in here originally coming all the way up to the rim practically. It's been collapsing and taking up less space. Not to mention the fact that we've been adding food every so often too, and there was eight feedings till now. This is feeding number nine. So I wondered if we should orient the feeding zone indicator this way, just to remind ourselves of the weird way we added it, because it did sort of span out this way, perhaps just by seeing it that way when we come back in here. I'll be reminded of that, and then we'll know what we're looking at when we come back in here. But I think that's pretty much it for our check-in. With the now 100-day-old bin, of red wigglers doing really nicely in here. The reason these are not living in two sort of sister bins or brother bins was because I did actually take the worms that came out of two harvested systems and combine them both into here. That's the reason I wanted to start with a lot of bedding in the beginning and that's the reason I kind of went to the pretty much the full capacity of the container when we originally launched this system. Not to mention this is one of my slightly larger bins too so Gradually, it does feel like it's all starting to settle down. Pretty soon, I feel like we'll be able to get back into the routine of just, you know, adding bedding with the feedings. But for now, I'm still shying away from doing that in the hopes that we can first see the overall volume of the material settle a little bit, and then we'll get back into the habit of adding bedding with the feedings. So that's it for the check-in, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.